Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Hope Sessions podcast with me, Jerry D. Every Monday for the next couple of months, we're going to be diving into the Word of God and discovering some of the incredible truths that are inside it. And I believe that as we begin to discover the power inside the Word, that it will greatly inspire, encourage, and impact our journey of faith as we continue to trust God in our daily lives. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this podcast wherever you are listening to it from. This greatly helps to spread the message about the podcast and also encourage other people to check it out for themselves. Don't forget the hope is to life as oxygen is to the body. The message is simple. But also don't forget to enjoy the show. Take care. God bless. I want to say something, right? Um, it may be obvious because I'm a spoken word artist, but my favorite book in the Bible, definitely one of about 10, has to be the book of Psalms. I mean, the writing in it, there's a lot of different poetic styles. There's real honest moments where, where David is just pouring out his heart to God. Um, and it's crazy because there's 150 Psalms and throughout the course of each of them, it talks about every emotion that we have experienced, are experiencing or will experience, such as fear, anger, loneliness, betrayal, you know, discouragement, you know, mountaintop experiences and experiences where you're down in the valley. And I love it because yet, even in the midst of all those human emotions, our hearts get so much encouragement from reading the psalmist pour out his heart to God. You know, it's really beautiful to consider it because there's one thing that we're going to notice over the course of just today's message even. And I think even if you read the book of Psalms for yourself, you will know that David wasn't led by his feelings but rather he directed his feelings to the right place because it's okay to feel different emotions and stuff, but it's what we do with the feelings, which is what's really important, you know, and let's jump into it. We're going to, we're going to be in four different Psalms today. And the title of the, this week's episode is remembering him who is Jesus, you know? So Psalm three says the following, Oh Lord, I have so many enemies, so many are against me. So many are saying God will never rescue him. But you, O Lord, are a shield around me. You are my glory, the one who holds my head high. I cried out to the Lord and he answered me from his holy mountain. I laid down and slept, yet I woke up in safety for the Lord was watching over me. I am not afraid of 10,000 enemies who surround me on every side. Arise, O Lord, rescue me, my God. Slap all my enemies in the face. Shatter the teeth of the wicked. Victory comes from you, O Lord. May you bless your people. And in Psalm 3, David is in quite a horrible situation. His own son is leading what seems to be a successful rebellion or war against him. Like, imagine what that must have felt. Like, I'm not a father yet, but I can imagine when you bring a child into the world, there's such a deep connection, a deep love in your heart for this person. You want to raise them up in the right way. And then I can imagine when that person gets older and if something like this happens, I'm pretty sure David was lost for words in a lot of sense. You know, and even in, in this Psalm, it's clear that Many people thought that David was beyond God's help. Think about how discouraging it must have been when David would have heard people murmuring or whispering or gossiping or chatting about him, saying, like, there's no help for David. Like, his own son turned against him. What a horrible father. He must have really failed. And all this stuff that goes on, people just, people just be chatting. Do you know what I mean? Um, but despite what people said or thought, David knew, or should I say, David remembered that his God was both his shield and a prayer answering God. And that is the same for you and me today. Not only is God our shield, but when we pray to him, he is a prayer answering God. When David said, but you, O Lord, are a shield around me, the one who holds my head high. This was not a prayer. But in fact, this was a declaration in the midst of a very difficult situation for David. He was 
he was encouraging himself in the Lord, reminding himself of the promises of God in the midst of difficult times, which is so true for us as well, which will greatly help us in our times of difficulty. You know, and as it's really incredible to just to see the honesty, sorry, the honesty coming out of David in these Psalms. Let's let's move on to Psalm 4. It says the following in verse one, verse one of Psalm 4. Answer me when I call to you, O God, who declares me innocent. Free me from my troubles. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you people ruin my reputation? How long will you make groundless accusations? How long will you continue your lies? You can be sure of this. The Lord set apart the godly for himself. The Lord will answer when I call to him. Don't sin by letting anger control you. Think about it overnight and remain silent. Offer sacrifices in the right spirit and trust the Lord. Many people say, who will show us better times? Let your face smile on us, Lord. You have given me greater joy than those who have abundant harvests of grain and new wine. Listen to this. In peace, I will lie down and sleep. For you, O Lord, will keep me safe. Powerful. And even to, to think about it, right? So, so in this psalm, it's quite clear. I've just read it. David is pouring out his complaints against his enemies. They're making groundless accusations. And, and it's been a time of discouragement for David. Yet he was finding his peace and reminding himself that he has a refuge in God. He seems to be so focused, though, like on his reputation in the middle of being attacked with both lies and groundless accusations, feeling like his reputation is under attack and that it's going to be somehow discredited and that he somehow, somehow maybe has to uphold himself, not knowing and reminding himself that the Lord is upholding him anyway, and he always has been. He also knew that the Lord had set him apart for a specific purpose. And what I love about this psalm is in this psalm, God not only hears David, but he also keeps him, sustains him, and guards him. Because in Psalm 4, verse 8, it says again, in peace, I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, will keep me safe. Beautiful. And in Psalm 11, it says the following. I trust in the Lord for protection. So why do you say to me, fly like a bird to the mountains for safety? The wicked are stringing their bows and fitting their arrows on the bowstrings. They shoot from the shadows at those whose hearts are right. The foundations of law and order have collapsed. What can the righteous do? But the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord still rules from heaven. He watches everyone closely, examining every person on earth. The Lord examines both the righteous and the wicked. He hates those who love violence. He will rain down blazing coals and burning sulfur on the wicked, punishing them with scorching winds. For the righteous Lord loves justice. The virtuous will see his face. And this psalm got me when I was studying it. Because it deals with David lifting his eyes to the Lord in the midst of getting faithless advice from his friends. No, maybe you're so used to getting advice to people that maybe you can't determine the difference between faithful and faithless advice. Faithful advice will always encourage you to go towards the Lord, to trust the Lord, to talk to the Lord, to, to walk closely with the Lord. Faithless advice would be, it's well, it says without faith, so it's faithless. So it's taking the faith aspect of the advice out and it would be just like, go hide for shelter. Like it says here, run, run to the mountains, you know, um, and it's crazy to think of that because I think we've all on some level experienced faithless advice, you know, and I love the fact that even in this Psalm, David was constantly hunted by King Saul and he also lived in constant danger because of this. And in the midst of it, obviously we know that his friends advised him to flee as a bird to the mountain. In other words, get up from where you're going and go as far away as you can to avoid facing this. They gave him the advice of fear. But 
this advice couldn't stand with the position of trust that David had in the Lord. And I love that because David was only, he was able to remind himself and his friends that God hasn't gone anywhere. So I'm not either. And I was thinking how, how could David even imagine, how could he even uh, have a position of trust in the Lord to know that, to, to speak to his friends and himself that God hasn't gone anywhere. So I won't either. And really it comes down to journeying with God. You know, David has a wonderful journey with God. You can read about that throughout the book of Psalms through his mountaintop experiences and his valley experiences. And, and God really molded him in such a way so that when times like this came, he was able to rise above the faithless advice and, and minister to his friends about where he's going to put his trust, where he's going to put his faith, even in, in the midst of this current chaos. I mean, I can't even imagine what it was like, some of the stuff he experienced, you know. But there is one thing that I, that I can imagine, and I know, I know full too well. It's that it's easy to let the advice of fear overwhelm me and discourage me. But I want to encourage you today. Remember that it's fate that assures our hearts. And this happens by being in the word of God, fueling our souls with the truth of his word, even when we don't feel like it. Because the truth is, if we feel like it, we would never read the word. Because our feelings are like the Irish weather. They change every couple of seconds, you know. Um, and let's move on to Psalm 13. Psalm 13 is awesome as well. Let's read it. It says the following in verse 1. O oh Lord, how long will you forget me? Forever? How long will you look the other way? How long must I struggle with anguish in my soul, with sorrow in my heart every day? How long will my enemy have the upper hand? Turn and answer me, O Lord, my God. Restore the sparkle to my eyes or I will die. Don't let my enemies gloat, saying we have defeated him. Don't let them rejoice at my downfall. But I trust in your unfailing love. I will rejoice because you have rescued me. I will sing to the Lord because he is good to me. And this psalm, Psalm 13, is known as a psalm of transition. What do I mean by that? I'll explain. So it starts off in a place of the three Ds, if you want to call it, discouragement, disappointment, and despair. But yet it ends up in a place of joy, trust, and encouragement. There is a pain in David's heart, and it came from thinking that God had forgotten him. Wow. Wow. That's, wow. Isn't it amazing how when you know, when you've got a confidence or when you're having one of those days where you know for sure that God is with you, you feel like you can take on any giant, any difficult circumstance. But as soon as you have that feeling that God has forgotten you, suddenly you become discouraged. You lose all motivation to, to even want to engage with people that day. You just, you, it's like a, a, a cloud of discouragement is just resting and raining upon you. But if you feel that way today, let me encourage you that he hasn't forgotten you. Listen to this in Isaiah chapter 49, verses 14 to 16. And it says the following. Yet Jerusalem says, the Lord has deserted us. The Lord has forgotten us. Never. Can a woman forget her nursing child? Can she feel no love for the child she has born? But even if that were possible, listen to this. I would not forget you. Here's where it's good. Listen to this, right? See, I have written your name in the palms of my hands. Always in my mind is a picture of Jerusalem's walls in ruin. See, I have written your name on the palms of my hand. Isn't that incredible to know that? That is a, 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 an incredible encouragement to take on board today for you if you're feeling forgotten. Well, let me tell you, your name is written on the palm of his hands, which means he can never forget you. But isn't it interesting how no wonder David was in despair because he was taking counsel in his own soul and that caused this element of despair to rise in his life. And when we are depressed, anxious, worried, fearful, all this stuff, 
the answer is not found in looking inward, but rather the answer is found in looking upward. How do I know that? Well, I suppose the best way for me to explain it is I'm a part of the Apple Society, which means I have a Apple phone, Apple laptop. You know, I love Apple as, as, a, as a company with the products. I just think it's fantastic in every way, shape or form. It makes everything easier in my life in a lot of ways. Um, but if there's a problem with my, my phone, um, I'm not going to go to a Samsung store or a Huawei store or, you know, or any of these other phone brands because they can't tell me the problem with my iPhone because they didn't create it. My iPhone was made by Apple. So Apple know the hardwiring, why the phone was created, how to fix a problem. So, so it wouldn't make sense for me to take my phone to a Samsung store and ask them to fix the problem with my Apple account or whatever, because they wouldn't know how to. And why am I saying this? Because the truth is for us, our creator, God himself knows how you are wired. He knows the things that go on in your body that maybe you don't know, but he also knows how to settle you and calm you. So why is it that we feel like we go to the created things, our friends, um, whoever else, social media, drink, drugs, um, or even, you know, sometimes we can suppress our feelings by just looking so far into the future about that next holiday or, or when I get that car, when I get that partner. But I want to encourage you today, go to the creator. And when you go to him, be honest, learn from David and these Sams, be fairly honest about how you're feeling. Don't sanitize your prayers or autocorrect them. He knows what's on your mind. He knows how you're feeling already. And he delights in hearing you vocalize the problem to him. Because there's one thing that I hate hearing, right? And, and, and I know what people mean when they say it, but really, I still hate the saying. And it's just saying, I miss the good old days. Well, to me, I don't miss the so-called good old days because those good old days for me, for the first 17 slash 18 years of my life, I lived life without knowing Jesus, which meant I was on a treadmill all the time of trying to gain approval, acceptance, Love, affirmation, satisfaction in friends and music and relationships and, and always trying to be better than the next person. But now since I became a Christian, I became a Christian on the 7th of July, 2013, about half past one. I'll never forget it for as long as I live because that day transformed my life forever. I became a new creation according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Do you know, and it's for let me remind you of this. If you're a Christian today, you are in him forever which means the good old days for you have just begun. You don't have to face another battle on your own, another difficult season of life on your own. You have the, the Lord God, the creator of heavens and the earth, the, the Lord of angel armies who walks with you, the one who borrowed the cross, borrowed the tomb, rose again, defeating sin, death, and the grave to show you that there's nothing that could hold him, which means there's nothing that's holding you except the love of God today. And in closing, let me say this to you. Listen very carefully because this is this really helps me. This is something that I will read quite often. Um, and it's the following. Even in our darkest moments, those days where it seems completely hopeless for us, when we sit in empty houses full of broken and crushed dreams, when we fight demons of past failures, who we really are remains unchanged. Listen to this. We are forgiven. We are those who are bought back by the blood of Jesus. We are those who are embraced by a father who not for a single moment, even on our worst days, will ever stop loving us. And even if you've lost your grip on him, he hasn't lost his grip on you remember isaiah chapter 49 verse 16 says the following is again let me say it again see i have written your name on the palms of my hand and as you go from this episode today to continue on with your day i pray that there was a, a strong sense of encouragement that this was of some sort of use for you but the best way for us to close it out is we've talked about what to do now we're going to go to the one who can do something about our problems let's pray together Lord, we thank you today. 
the Lord, wherever we are listening to this episode, you are there in the midst with us. You have made provision for our deepest and darkest struggles. You died for us to bring us into relationship with you through faith in your son, Jesus. And Lord, when we put our faith in what you've done on the cross, it means that we never again have to feel unworthy, alone, confused, whatever it may be, Lord, you have made provision. And Lord, even for these moments that are deep, dark and confusing, we pray for the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding to guard our hearts and our minds. We pray for deeper revelation of who you are in our lives in the midst of our storms so that we can trust you with a, with a greater sense of confidence that you would put a Holy Ghost confidence in us, Lord. And as we go now, even about our day, week, month and years ahead, we pray, Lord, for, for a deepening in you so that when those trials and tribulations and difficult days do come or if we're experiencing them, that we would experience them knowing that you are there with us in the midst of them. We thank you. We love you in Jesus name. Hey guys, thanks again for tuning in to another episode of the Hope Sessions podcast with me, Jerry D. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this podcast wherever you're tuning into it from. This greatly helps to spread the word about the podcast, but also to encourage other people to check it out for themselves. Um, until next week, take care, God bless, and don't forget, hope is to life as often as to the body. Take care.